Hi, my name is Dane, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today, I'm going to be showing you some of the changes SolidWorks has made to its assemblies in 2016. The first thing you're going to notice is the ability to choose a configuration when inside the Insert Component feature. Once a part is selected within the Open Document Selection box of the Property Manager, a configuration dropdown will appear. This new dropdown will display all of the configurations available to the part. I'm going to insert my blocks here, one of each configuration, all within the Insert Component Property Manager. Of course, you can still change the configuration by clicking on the part and using the drop-down box that appears within the pop-up menu. I'm now going to mate my blocks together, as if stacking them, using the standard Control Select method. New to 2016 is the ability to mirror assembly features. In 2015, you can mirror parts or sub-assemblies with mirror components, but in 2016, the mirror feature allows you to mirror assembly features like holes and fillets, just like you would mirror features in the part level. To demonstrate this, I'm going to fillet the edges of the base block to match the stack block. Now the two edges are filleted, I'm going to mirror the assembly feature across the front plane of the part to fillet the other two edges. Since I selected Propagate the Features to Part in the Fillet function, the mirrored features are also propagated to the part. If I had not selected the checkbox within the fillet feature, the mirrored feature would also stay at the assembly level only and not propagate to the part. Brand new in 2016 is the ability to copy components with mates by dragging them from the Feature Manager design tree. All you need to do is select the items in the design tree and while holding down control, drag them into the graphics area. This will create copies of the components and retain the mates between them. As you can see, if I expand the mates folder, the individual parts, new mates are created for those parts. These mates are unique and have no reference to the parts they are copied from. If I stack my two copied blocks on top of my original stack by control selecting the faces and adding coincident and concentric mates, I can then select all four blocks in the Feature Manager design tree and create another mated block tower by simply holding down control while dragging the selected components from the design tree to the graphics area. I'm going to take one of these towers and create a sub-assembly to be used later. There have been some improvements to the quick mate selections that appear when you control select. Advanced and mechanical mates have been added to the quick mates bar to streamline the mating process even further. When the appropriate selections have occurred, symmetric, width, profile centers, cam, and slot mates will appear in the shortcut menu. Here, I have shown you a quick width mate for those two towers. As you've probably already noticed, I have misspelled block in the name of the part file. In 2016, you can rename a part or sub-assembly within the Feature Manager design tree and have the option to update all of its references. By default, this function is turned off, so you have to go into your system options under Feature Manager and enable component renaming. In order to rename the component, you can do the standard slow double mouse click, right click and select rename, or hit F2 while the component is selected. After renaming the component, the file changes in memory and all currently open documents that reference the renamed file are updated to reference the new file name. When you save the assembly, you'll be prompted by a Rename Documents dialog box. Within the box, you can select Update Where Used References, and that will update all the documents referencing the renamed part that were not opened. This is a lot easier than having to have to go through the renaming process in the SolidWorks Explorer application. New to 2016 is the ability to remove all appearances from a part, sub-assembly, or the entire top-level assembly. If you right-click on the component in the Feature Manager design tree and hit the drop-down arrow next to the Appearance icon, the last entry in the list gives you the ability to remove appearances from that selected component. Appearance changes made at the top level will propagate down through sub-assemblies and parts. You can also access the Remove button by right-clicking on a component in the Graphics area and pressing the drop-down arrow next to the Appearance icon in the pop-up window. The writing beside the red X will explain what level you are removing the appearances from. So, the Remove Appearance button at the Part level will say Remove All Part Appearances From and then the name of the part will be displayed. In this case it says Block. A sub-assembly will say Remove All Appearances From All Components in the name of the subassembly, 
And finally, at the top level, the button will say remove all appearances from all components in the name of the assembly. I'm going to remove all the appearances because this color scheme is atrocious. After making your assembly, you can try to reduce the file size and speed up rebuild time by selectively deleting features and components that are suppressed in all configurations of the model, or removing unused reference geometry and sketches that have no child references. To access the command, you right-click on the top level of the assembly in the Feature Manager design tree and select Purge Unused Features. A dialog box will appear listing features that are suppressed in all configurations and unused sketches and reference geometry. Inside the box, you can select what you want to delete as after you hit the OK button, all selected items will be deleted. There might be configurations or reference geometry that is used in a higher top level assembly, so make sure you understand what you're deleting. This tool can also be utilized at the part level and used before an assembly is created. When you save an assembly as a multi-body part, more internal data is saved. The additional data allows mates from the assembly to be retained in the multi-body part. This is useful when you use the multi-body part as a simplified representation of the assembly in a higher level layout assembly and then later need to make changes. When you make changes to the subassembly and again save it as a multi-body part, you can replace the old multi-body part with the new one without having to recreate the mates. Only the active configuration of the assembly is saved in the multi-body part. Configuration specific properties from the active configuration plus all custom properties are saved in the multi-body parts. You can use them in the bill of materials and annotations. The last change I'm going to talk about today is in the evaluation tab of the command manager. The assembly expert tool has been renamed to performance evaluation and the icon is changed to the rebuild traffic light with a stopwatch beside it. The formatting inside the tool has changed to make the information easier to read and there is now a clickable link which will display the rebuild time of the assembly. So, in this video, I have shown you some of the changes SolidWorks has made to assemblies in 2016, like configuration selection when inserting a part, the new assembly feature mirror, copying multiple components with mates from the design tree, renaming components from the design tree, removing all appearances in one click, purging unused features, and the redesigned performance evaluation tool. If you like this video, found the information useful, or want to see others like it, please subscribe to our channel.